right everyone hope you have a good week I am at a place I have always wanted to come for pretty much as long as I've been riding. I'm at Sea Otter Classic here in California. So I'm here with Drop and Roll. Thanks so much to Magura for having us here, Continental as well. We're all set up and we've actually done quite a few shows already. It's quite easy to film too much at these events, so I've saved it to the last day. Right now I've had a good look around. I'm going to take you guys around and show you some of the cool things I found. Before we get started around Sea Otter, I just want to say I met Seth from Seth Bike Hacks yesterday. I know a lot of you guys follow him as well and it's really cool to meet him in person. He's actually such a genuinely nice guy and we've been talking and potentially we've got some plans. So yeah, let me know in the comments what would you like to see us do. Alright guys, so like I've mentioned, Seth is here. Uh, we just did a little bit of a uh, trial skill so it's going to have pop that up on his channel but yeah awesome to bump into you dude for sure you too like he is one brave guy um obviously he's got some pretty good skills but he just went and launched himself off this box that was really scary <laughs> i'm gonna admit so i think uh while fabio's injured we're gonna have him take over for the for the show so you up for that man i'm up for it yeah i'll, I'll give it my best shot it'll be yeah. entertainment at the very least <laughs> so yeah i uh, probably don't need to say this at all but if you're not subscribed on youtube Go do that right now. He's a pro. Seth's bike hacks on YouTube. <laughs> as well as Seth, I actually met one of my biggest idols growing up, growing up riding trials. Uh, I met Jeff Lenoski. He came and watched a bit of the show, had a chat with him. And again, one of my heroes, really cool to meet him. And the chief himself, Mr. Hans Ray, he came along, watched the show, had a quick chat with him. And yeah, just absolutely stoked to have met those guys. I had thought I would go around and make maybe like a top 10 coolest bikes or top 10 coolest components and stuff. But actually there's far too much stuff here. It'd be really hard to actually pick a top 10. So what I'm just gonna do is go around and show you guys some of the just cool stuff I've seen. So let's get on with it. All right guys, so I'm here with Pole Bicycles. This bike has been causing a lot of stir online. I know I'm particularly interested in this. This is, has this even got a model name? It's Pole Machine. Yeah. Machine? Yeah. Okay, this is the Pole Machine. This is burger alley. Henry. Lunch delivery. <laughs> uh, just pop it on the floor or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt everybody, the man's got to eat. <laughs> That's vlogs for you. Anyway, this is the Pole Machine. This is fully CNC'd. One, no, it's two halves. Is yeah, it? it's made of two blocks. It's 7075 T6 aluminium and it's bonded together. Nice. This is, well, this is a machine. You need to check out some of the details on this. I actually really like this it's kind of the machined finish you guys have got on this. Got an offset shock. It's really cool. So, yeah, this is a fully machined frame but still hollow. So, it's awesome. 29 inch wheels. How much travel? Uh, 160 in the back, 160 on the front. Ah, oh, whoa. So long travel 29er. It's actually the first time ever on a, on these super long geometry bikes as well. All right. Break to the wrong way around. All right, yeah, the normal ones, not the moto. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> well, it's good on the back wheel. Yeah. For how big a bike it is, it doesn't feel big. Yeah, it ain't. It... That's light. I thought it was going to be really heavy. Yeah, it's 14 by 8 kilos, and the wheelbase on Lars is, is 1,335 millimeters, so it's a quite long, yeah. yeah. That is. Obviously that's just a car park test, but it feels yeah. really nice. Good, thank good work, you, man. thank Thanks. you. Cheers, dude. So yeah, nice bike. Right, to be fair, I'm not the only trials rider at Sea Otter. Well, obviously we've got the Danny and Duncan. We've also got Robbie Thunder. Thunder? Is that? Yeah, Thunder. Thunder. He's silent. <laughs> it's one of these guys, I've obviously seen him online and never spoken to him in person. I didn't quite know how to pronounce his last name, but... Uh, he's here with Mike, another name I don't know how to pronounce. Yeah, Steadley. Mike, Mike Steadley. Steadley, yep. I got that right, cool. So we're doing the Kenda show. Yeah, so these guys doing the Kenda show over the other side. Managed to check them out for not the whole show, unfortunately, because we had to go and do stuff, but they got skills. Yeah. So how are you finding Sea Otter, man? 
Dude, Sea Otter's awesome. So this is my first year. Mike's been doing this for 20 years, so I'm, I'm, I find that, uh, yeah, he's been doing this 20 years. This is my first year, like I said, but I find myself just kind of like a kid in a candy store, yeah. you know? It's like a uh, 14 year old kid in me and the 34 year old adult <laughs> in me is like totally colliding oh, as uh, totally. I walk around and check all this stuff I out. I totally know how you feel, man. Yeah, 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 I'm the same. Yeah. So obviously you're riding a hex at the minute, but I saw your yeah. show earlier. You were riding a seatless comp bike. So yeah, so I got the Echo Mark IV that we typically do for demos. Um, but then this is kind of my fun bike as well. <laughs> I'm so. a bit biased, so I've got to say I, I prefer this one. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> Try to keep it real. This this thing actually has a seat, so yeah. check this out. This is gonna oh, be, we got a quick this release. This is gonna on. be mind blowing. So I have a quick release. Whoa. I can actually put this up and like do wheelies. I can ride around like you can a commute. real bike. <laughs> I can commu commuting on a child's bike. Yeah, man. Exactly. Awesome. Uh, so. By the way, if you guys want to check out Robbie online, I don't even need to put this on the bottom of the screen. He's got it on his bike. <laughs> Go check him out, guys. Cool. Thanks. Later guys. Alright guys, so this is a company and a person I most definitely wanted to get in the vlog. This is Brian from uh, Tantrum Cycles. I've been following his work uh, with his uh, latest business, Tantrum Cycles. He's had some uh, previous suspension di designs taken on board by Kona in the past, that's right. But now he's gone fully on his own. He's come up with a new suspension design, which is actually pretty awesome. Caught my attention. And he is here at Sea Otter, completely on his own. Brought a couple of bikes with him. He's got a tiny little, it's not even a booth, is it just your van? <laughs> My minivan. Yeah, it works. So, yeah, I totally respect what this guy's doing, doing it completely on his own. Well, I say his wife helps as well. <laughs> and yeah, out of his own pocket. So, I wanted to get him. I'll show you the bikes in a second. So, yeah, totally love what you're doing, man. Totally respect that. So. I appreciate it. I mean, and, the best thing is he lent one of his bikes to is it anyone you know is it just no no he was a double rider and he i did a double with him in santa cruz last weekend he yeah. said hey do you mind if i race your bike at sea otter and i said it's a demo bike go for it <laughs> so someone came along used a demo bike and ended up winning the downhill on one of his bikes so yeah he wanted it was his first win too his first ever his first win, downhill so. win my first win right yes you, you know how many brands want to win sea otter all of them yeah all of them <laughs> i call this i call it the missing link because it, this link is what does not exist on any other bike yeah and what i've done is i'm i'm taking the forces from the chainstay the horizontal forces and I'm feeding them into the top of the shop. Yeah. That's why it's missing from, no other bike has this, no other bike can use the forces. So when you're pedaling, you're driving the bike forward from the chainstay. That's tending to rotate the link in this direction, uh -huh. making it more difficult to compress the shop. Sure. Essentially making it stiffer. Yeah. So the harder you pedal, the stiffer it gets, to the point where if you're doing a granny gear climb, it will be, it'll feel like it's locked out. Cool, man. And, this, and the shock will be fully extended and the geometry will be three to four degrees steeper than the static geometry. Awesome. You hit a bump, the opposite. First thing is that the wheel sees is the horizontal force to the rear. So it instantly wants to rotate the link this way and, and break free and compress the shock easily. So even though you're climbing and it feels like a, it's locked out, as soon as you hit the root, the rock, it instantly allows the, the wheel to absorb that rock. The back doesn't squat at that time. It stays up, so you're in yeah. your steep climbing geometry. But the wheel moves. The spring is at a very low force when it's fully extended. So okay. when it hits that rock, the, the force of this pushing back beats your pedaling force and allows the wheel to absorb it. Well, cool. But you're what, still putting enough pedaling force to keep the back up. Yeah. So every other bike on the market, when it's climbing, the geometry is slacker than its static geometry. Yeah. Every bike, the fork's extended, the rear's compressed. The opposite. So basically you've come up with the suspension design that everyone's trying to get but hasn't. Since the beginning of time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, every company, every suspension company, every bike company is trying to solve this problem. Yeah. Uh, and, and you solved it. That's awesome. So there you go guys, this is basically how suspension should be. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Good work, man. <laughs> That's how it should be. Yeah, man. What wheels it has the this low, this is 27 and a half, 170 front. Do you want to swap the brakes? I'll just try and... <laughs> not die? Yeah, just try and not die. <laughs>
feels like a trials bike. <laughs> So there you go, everyone, kind of the suspension in action. Not quite a pink bike suspension movement video, but give you some idea anyway. So that's what I love about Brian and Tantrum Cycles. He is such a quirky guy, and he's literally just driven here on his own, in a van with just a few bikes, with his own Kickstarter business, and yeah, he's just doing it on his own. He's had some help with a couple of brands for like Magura, giving him brakes and stuff, but it's just one of these really cool success stories. So yeah, go follow him on Instagram. So guys, we've got the new specialized stump jumper here and we've got someone who knows a little bit about it. So <laughs> what's your involvement? Not much. I'm the annoying guy that asks for lots of fun stuff on the stump jumper. So oh uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, worked with the team for years that built this bike and watched the whole thing come to life. And it's a very, very fun bike. I've been riding it since uh, last September. Yeah, man. And it, the first thing that you're gonna notice when you start riding through the rough stuff is that if this is where you wanna go, that's where the bike's gonna take you. Yeah. It tracks oh, yeah. so well, climbs great, fun to look at. It's and a good looker. It's a nice looking bike. Yeah, sure. man. Well, you know, the, the funny thing about the bike is there's not really one thing that we're most proud of. It's it's kind of the sum of all the pieces that went into it. Yeah. So when you look at it, different things jump out of different people. You know, the one-arm design, lighter, stiffer in the right areas, that, that sings to some people. Full carbon rear end, I personally like that one. Yeah. The new rear end is, is uh, noticeably stiffer when you're riding the bike. A lot more compatibility built into it, so you can run whatever shock that you want. You can run a longer travel, a shorter travel, 27.5 or 29. Yeah, you've so got a few different versions, haven't you? All the all the options are there, so it's like it's not my bike, it's it's your bike. So you do do what you want to do on there. Uh, but I gotta say, my my two personal favorite things is the new chainstay protector. Oh yeah, looks kind of crazy, but we we're trying to make sure that when the chain is slapping, that the uh, the bumps break up that wave that's going through there. Okay. That coupled with this chain guide. So it flips up so you can make it really easy on yourself to change the chain ring and uh, you know if you pop, pop a chain or something like that. So this bike, there are zero zip ties and it's dead silent. It's almost really? weird the first time you ride it. It's like it doesn't make any noise. That's funny. I, I've literally never seen a bike without any zip ties. That's actually pretty cool. Eh? Not a single yeah. one on here. I can't not get this in the vlog. This thing is a monster. Not sure if it's uh, going to be any good for climbing, but potentially pretty good for the downhills. All right, everyone, so I've arrived here at the Ceram Rock Shocks booth. We've got Hercules here. He's a fan of the vlogs, which is awesome. He's also working here at Rock Shocks. And I really like the new boxer, so he's just going to explain a little bit about it. So, yeah, let's get straight in there. Cool, yeah. So. With Boxer, we it's it's an all new fork. We've got a new spring. We call it Debonair Spring. Um, it's a very coil-like feel, but super tunable. So that's awesome. We've got the new Charger 2, which has independently adjustable high and low speed compression, as well as the ring bound. We've got the new chassis components. The crowns are shorter to keep the cockpit low, to kind of compensate for bigger wheel sizes. We've got uh, the new color on the lower legs, red's back. So the that's color awesome. is awesome. Man. It looks great. Yeah. And I've got a red, red Lyric on my uh, enduro bike back at home, and it just it looks amazing. So, yeah, those are some of the highlights of uh, the new Boxer. I wish I had a bike to put them on, then. <laughs> Should just get one. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> Most of you guys will probably know by now I'm running the Industry 9 hubs. I'm here at their booth. I'm going to just check out some of their stuff. I mean, check out these wheels. Pretty much just the pimpest wheels in the world, especially this one. Look at the colors on there, man. I'd actually really like to try a full wheel on my trials bike if they do a 26 inch model, but absolutely pimp. Yeah, they pretty much make every hub to fit every bike you could ever want. I think this is the model I've got, the single speed. Yeah, really, really keen on these. They're awesome. We've got internals over here. Now this is, this is a good way to show the system. That is awesome. It's pretty much, a, it's better than a fidget spinner. Right? 
Yeah. That was awesome. You could sell these as they are. We're at the Fuji stand here. It is that much more. These are a new model. I actually are loving it, the low slung uh, with the tall seat tube there. Bit of a different suspension system as well. We've got the pivots right in the chainstay there. So, yeah, these are our new bikes. We just released them. Or they're coming to market soon. Uh, they're completely redesigned from our last org. They're both 27.5 bikes, and we're also coming out with our 29ers, the Recons. Yeah. Um, this is our platform that we had before, but like I said, it's completely redesigned. It's a longer top tube, steeper seat tube, much slacker head tube angle, which is really exciting. We went with the trunnion mount on this new bike. Um, more bushing overlap for better durability, more air pressure, better small bump compliance. Um, we have a threaded bottom bracket now, which is nice. really exciting. Much more aggressive geometry in our M-Link suspension design. That's our proprietary suspension design. It's been tuned specifically to work with this more aggressive geometry, which is really exciting. And this is the bike that won the Enduro this weekend. Ideal. So our, our team rider, Amy Morrison, did a really good job. This is our 130, 140 model. Okay. Uh, 130 in the rear, a 40 suspension. And this is our super aggressive like park bike. <laughs> this is the, the one I'm really, really stoked about. This is 160, 170. So this yeah. is our 27.5 bike. Super, super aggressive. Really, really slack head tube angle with the reduced offset for um, really, really progressive geometry design here. Not a lot of other bikes. Uh, not a lot of bike, other bikes out there that are competing with this model. It's like we we're calling like a downhill replacement bike. Most people can yeah. put this bike in their quiver rather than a full downhill bike because it can handle everything in the park. But uh, you can also pedal it back up to the top. So yeah. These are two new orcs, and we're really stoked about them. This one's been all over the internet recently. The new Yeti with their new, well you can't see it because it's got a cover on it, but the new suspension system, I like that. I'm loving how everyone's going to the new straighter tubes as well. Yeah, that's a nice looking bike. And then we've got this thing. What's this, a downhill trike? <laughs> that's pretty rad. Right guys, this is another company I've wanted to get on the vlog. It's Box Components with their drivetrain parts. And so, I'm so bad at names. I've oh, got... it's all good. My name's Ethan. I work for Box Components. <laughs> I work in R&D department. We get to make some cool stuff. Uh, this is our new for 2018 drivetrain. We moved away from the push push and towards a two lever shifter. It's a little bit more user friendly, easy to uh, you know get on. Yeah, man. And um, on the derailleur, we made some really key upgrades. Uh, Ford, uh, forged head and top link. Uh, new clutch, which is adjustable, instant engaging, serviceable. We have two cage lengths now. This is the wide, which is 1146. We also have an 1150. And then we have uh, three levels of chains, some bars and stems from XC through DH. And then, um, yeah, some of this stuff has been written in Red Bull Rampage this year. UCI nice. World Cup downhill. No pressure there. Yeah, no, <laughs> no pressure there at all. But uh, yeah, Vinny T's been treading on this for quite a while and it's been really solid. He makes some cool videos too. Yeah, no, um, that feels really nice as well. Yeah, it's, uh, we've tried to make the, the shifting points really snappy and positive, so when you're riding down that aggressive trail, you can feel it, you know, snap into place. Yeah, and, man. Um, just dur durability, serviceability, and, uh, you know, easy to obtain, so. So this is kind of one advantage of not having any sponsors, is that I can pretty much go around to any booth and say, that bike's cool, and that bike's cool. I don't really have to curb any of my opinions on things, so. Yeah, it's nice to have the freedom. I've now run out of time to do any more of this box. I've got to do another show now, so it's the last show of the weekend. Go and do that. Hopefully afterwards, if I've got enough time, there's still some really cool stuff here. It's probably gonna end up being like an hour long vlog just chatting to people, but it's actually so much interesting stuff, so many interesting people. It'd be nice to get a little bit more, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Right, sorry guys, I cannot walk past this bike without getting this on film. This is the Uno uh, Enduro model, what's it called? The Burn. This is pretty much the pimpest carbon fiber bike I think I've ever seen. I'm not sure how well this is coming through on the GoPro, but that is some uh, nice carbon fiber. I don't know how much this model is, but I think I heard rumors about this being, was it over 10 grand? 10,000 pounds for this yeah that's a lot of money but that is nice all right guys unfortunately I can't show you any more because the event has finished I would have loved to have gone and shown you a few more things It'd probably end up like being two hours long or something because there's absolutely tons of amazing stuff here but as 
much as I want to do it. You get, you start walking, people start talking to you, and then you need to do a show, and then there's autographs. So that's as much as I could do. So we just have to come back next year and yeah, try and get even more. It's hard being famous, Ali, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Steve's Danny. So that is us packing up now. End of Sea Otter has been absolutely incredible. I know there's not been that much riding, or no riding even. Uh, Dave has been filming some video footage for Magura. There's going to be some really cool show stuff. It's going to be way better than I could ever do. Plus, later this next week coming, we're going to go out, ride some street. There's an amazing skate park which we've been told about with dirt jumps. We're going to check that out. This is thinking about. So the next video will be a riding one. So yeah, consider this one a bit of a bonus one. So I hope you guys liked it. Uh, stay tuned for the next installment of our California trip. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. Yeah.